Hello, True Believers, and welcome back to another edition of BK's Bullets. My name is Jim, back again, yet another week of DC animated classics, this time taking a look at 2010's Justice League Crisis on Two Earths. Now, before we get into today's review, all you got to do is subscribe and come back again here next week because I'll be talking about even more DC animated classics on my journey to get through Brent's entire voodoo library. I don't think I'm remotely close, but here we go. I watched Justice League Crisis on Two Earths, and I have to say it was actually really, really good. Um when they're not talking. <laughs> There's always going to be a caveat in a movie like this. I love Elseworld tales. If you guys haven't figured that out, I love when DC breaks the mold. I love fun, new, original ideas. I am beyond sick and tired of the same old, same old. And this movie does a very cool thing. And it takes our known heroes and it sends them to an alternate reality where there are evil variants of them and they fight. Why do they fight? Well, other than the big evil plot and the fact that, you know, there has to be a reason they're fighting, the premise of this is actually pretty weak. Um, it really boils down to Owl Man, <laughs> which is, I don't understand. Okay, look, I get it. You got to have an alternate version of Bruce Wayne, who is Batman, obviously. You're going to have to have an, an alternate to him. I guess, you know, you could compare owls to bats in the sense that they're both winged creatures who lurk in the night. I guess that's the line they're going for. But Owl Man just doesn't look very menacing. He's got a very goofy design, and the name just doesn't drive fear in the heart the way Batman does. And maybe it's because we're so used to Batman. I mean... Not that a, an animal or a creature has to instill fear. I mean, Spider-Man, I, I think spiders are scre creepy, and, and I don't like spiders at all. Definitely not. But Spider-Man is just like a happy-go-lucky, fun guy. Owlman is neither happy-go-lucky nor fun. His design is bonkers. It, it's very, very weird. Um, but basically, this whole movie boils down to Owlman... <laughs> <laughs> wanting to destroy all life across every galaxy forever. Why? He says in his own words, quote, it doesn't matter. That's the whole premise of this movie. All, everything leading up to it is about Owlman wanting to destroy everything by building and uh, lacing the, or planting this bomb in what they call Earth Prime, which is the real Earth go with it it doesn't matter honestly don't watch this movie for the plot because it's stupid watch the movie for the action that's what i want to focus on this is by far of all these reviews i've done and in case you missed any there's a playlist below go ahead and click on that and you can go back in time and watch this journey with me so far of all the movies i've seen so far this one by a country mile has the best action some of the coolest fighting I have seen. And I think it has a lot to do with the fact that you're having superhero on superhero type violence. And they almost have to think outside the box. I'll give you guys an example. Um, Batman throws his trusty Batarang at Owlman. Owlman counters by throwing his trusty Owlarang <laughs> back at Batman. Okay, well they both hit and then like nothing happens because it's pretty much a wash, right? Like they both just doink. But then Owlman grabs Batman and presses a button and this face shield comes down and covers his face and he holds his wrist up and shoots this poisonous gas out of his helmet or out of his wrist. He's wearing a helmet so he's safe, but Batman standing behind him is not safe. It's stuff like that that was really cool. Wonder Woman fighting evil Wonder Woman, Batman or Superman fighting Ultraman and then all the other ones. The way they interacted with each other was awesome because they couldn't just do their normal attacks. You had Ultraman and um, Superman shooting lasers at each other. Well, they just cancel out because they're both Superman, right? 
but it's how they interact outside of that that made the fights really fun and fresh and different. And I really, really enjoyed the action in this. Um, they did a really phenomenal job of making the, the hits and the impact seem believable. Um, so much so, I was so, so excited. Um, as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of Arrow. Um, and my absolute favorite character on Arrow, of course, is uh, Canary. And it was so cool that she had a little bit of a cameo in here, getting to do her sonic scream. I counted three sonic screams, which was a new record. <laughs> that was great. It was cool to see her. But what made this so fun, I mean, I'm joking about it. No, I'm not joking about her, but I mean, obviously, most people are going to be like, whatever. There were a lot of people in here I didn't actually recognize, which um, I'm sure diehard comic book fans will appreciate a lot of stuff. Like the alternate Earth 2 version of these superheroes, radically different. Um, Jimmy Olsen, for example, who's kind of like a dorky sidekick to Superman. Well, Clark Kent. Um, in this movie, he's like basically Juggernaut. <laughs> so they just had fun with it, and I appreciate that. And I'm sure if you're a super comic book super fan like Brent, you just really understand the nuts and bolts of this, you probably appreciated seeing everything in the background. There was probably a lot of Easter egg type stuff or references or whatever to characters or to things that are different than our normal standard, like Batman and Owlman, for example. But the what made this so cool was all the fight scenes, they were layered. They were so much depth to the screen. I mean, you would have Flash and Evil Flash <laughs> fighting in the background and then in the forefront, you'd have two other superheroes fighting. Meanwhile, there were two other superheroes fighting kind of off to the side. And it kind of just panned back and forth. The battles just panned. If you remember that, you know, the infamous um, Avengers scene, in a good way infamous, where they're all like standing and posing and the camera pans and they're all like, you know, and then they all break off into the action again. I, I swear this movie, which I know came out way before then, I almost felt like this scene, movie was an inspiration for that scene because there are a lot of these really cool pans that go across where you'll see 20, 30 different things happening, you know, over the course of like 30, 40 seconds. You know, Flash will phase in, phase out. Wonder Woman will kick somebody and run after her. Uh, Batman's fighting. You know, they're all just, there's layers of combat here and it was all meaningful. And it felt like there was a battle. It felt like there was a real clash of these two menacing teams you know you have the the good the good guys justice league and then this this evil syndicate because you know they want to blow up the world and they're, they're fighting you got lex Luthor kind of running around in there helping out a little bit too um it was fun it was really cool to watch and i appreciated it and all i could think is after the credits rolled um which is like 70 minutes or so which is you know about average for these types of movies all i could think is man like this could have been so much better if the plot meant more. Um, if they had put a little more thought into it other than bad guys are bad and must be stopped. I feel like we would have had a significantly better movie. Um, I will say I really appreciated seeing my boy Deathstroke <laughs> get some love in this movie. As you know, I'm a Deathstroke super fan. So it was cool to see him even though he was the president. And he never puts on the infamous Deathstroke suit. Um, and he's pretty much a wuss in this movie. It was still a death stroke, and I'll take it. <laughs> so I can't complain about that too much. Um, I'm looking through you know, the Wikipedia here, and it seems like it received pretty positive reviews. Made a pretty good you know, chunk of change, which is awesome. Um, and then it led into a sequel called Justice League Doom, which I'm sure at some point I will check out as well. Um, I love the voice acting in this. I'm looking through the who's who. There were quite a bit of famous voice actors here. Most notably, uh, I, I pick a night picked I picked up on Mark Harmon's voice almost immediately as Superman and then James Wood as Owlman. Um, and I think that's what kind of gave me the thought that maybe like uh, James Wood's or Owlman was going to be the supervillain in this because, you know, James Wood's is kind of a very distinct voice actor and he did a good job. Nolan North makes an appearance here as well. Uh, yeah, there's some actually some really good uh, Gina Torres and um, yeah. I enjoyed it. I, like I said, I, I wish they could have done better with the plot because I feel like it was a waste for this this star-studded list of of um, people who were in here. Uh, a lot of a lot of people. Um, actually, I'm looking at all the superhero names now. There was a guy called 
Uncle Super, Breakdance, Firestorm, Black Lightning. I don't remember seeing Black Lightning in there. I'm thinking of the CW version, so I don't know who this was in there. Mr. Action. <laughs> DC, you guys got to do better with this crap. Mr. Action. I got to click on this link. I know this has nothing to do with... Oh, Jimmy Olsen is Mr. Action. Whatever, I'm done. Listen, I'm going to focus on this. I, I could go off on a tangent. Maybe one day I will go off on a tangent of how horrible this naming convention is. You guys missed the boat on the plot. You had a really good star-studded voice acting cast, and it was a meaningless throwaway plot. It could have been significantly cooler if this action had paired with a meaningful plot. Something that really made me feel something. I think this could be one of the best DC animated movies I've seen to date. I still think it ranks up there pretty highly because the action was just so over the top. I've never seen anything like that to date in any of the videos that, or yeah, videos that I've seen you know, from Brent's uh, voodoo account. Of all these animated films, this is the best I've seen, honestly, in terms of just raw, great, just popcorn flick, blockbuster type video. Unfortunately, the talking behind it was just bad. And yeah, I think I'm getting an idea here. I'm forming a thought here. At some point, I'm not going to say when, we're going to just deep dive into like a dozen of <laughs> a dozen of these bozo superhero names. Like who can forget Captain Super Junior? <laughs> what the hell? What the hell is going on here, DC? Fix your names of your guys. No one wants to read about Captain Super Junior. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just they nobody wants to do that. Anyways, I've rambled on enough. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Go watch this movie, but just fast forward. When they start talking, just scene, scene skip like 30 seconds. There was probably... I'd say less than 10 minutes of talking in this entire video. The rest was entire nonstop action. I would have been okay with just action. Just, you know, that doesn't even make sense. Like, hey, you're gonna watch a movie where a bunch of people are fighting. Okay, I'm in. Because honestly, that's what this devolved into about five minutes in for me when I saw how paper thin this plot was. But I wanna hear from you guys. Let me know your thoughts on Justice League, Crisis on Two Earths. Leave a comment below while you're down there. I know you subscribed. Thank you all so much for watching. Please, please take care of yourselves. And until next time, I will see you guys in the funny pages.